And well, joining us now, uh, the senior Supreme Court lawyer Mukul Rohatki, somebody who's been looking very closely at uh, the fallout of this particular case. Uh, Rahul Gandhi uh, is out of the Lok Sabha, at least for the moment. He's been disqualified. Mr. Rohatki, thanks very much for joining us. Firstly, to the case itself, sir, um, you know, in the cauldron of Indian politics, um, given what our political leaders across political lines say, do you not believe that this particular verdict of two years, a sentence, jail time, was somewhat harsh. What is your personal opinion? We aren't questioning the court. We're just, I'm just asking for your personal opinion on this. Uh, Vishnu, in the facts of this case, having studied these facts carefully, I do not think that two years is excessive at all. I see. For the following reasons. One, that this entitles you to automatic bail by the court concerned itself to enable you to appeal. If it is more than three years, that court has no power to grant you bail. Then your, uh, you know, your chances depend on the appellate court. Number two, please do not forget that the personalities involved are supposed to be responsible people heading responsible parties. The one making the allegation is representing the oldest uh, democratic party in this country who has a following of lakhs of people, where people follow what and believe what a big political leader says, the greater the responsibility, the greater should be your circumspection in terms of what you speak. And you are making wanton and scurrilous allegations, scandalous, if I may use the phrase, against the Prime Minister, just because... He has a surname which is akin to the surname of two people which the accused says are thieves, namely Lalit Modi and that uh, Neerab Modi. It is clear, it's not even an innuendo, it's not even an indirect thing, it's a clear attack on the Prime Minister. Okay. Just because he happens to have a surname, that's, that's the direct attack. And the larger issue is that you have attacked everybody with that surname, there may be more than one or ten crore of those people. So it's, it's a very, very scathing, wrong, scandalous statement, which affects hundreds of people, which affects the thinking of people. And if you read the offense of defamation under Section 499 of the Indian Penal Code, made nearly 150, more than 50 years ago, it says when you speak, which is intended to harm the reputation or character of a person, or even if you did not intend, but you knew it will harm, these two either way will bring home the offense, unless there are some exceptions that it is for public good, etc., etc. Now Mr. nobody Lord, can say this. Let me ask for this. Good. Do you believe that this will now set, um, this judgment will now set a precedent for all political parties to follow? Because let's face I, it, it's I, not I, just Rahul I, Gandhi and what he has said. Yes, our, think, our political discourse in this country is the worst it has ever been. Name calling is part of the game irrespective of the party. Well, I, I entirely agree with you, Vishnu. The debate in the largest democracy has gone down to a level which is kind of, one makes, uh, feel speechless in seeing what is happening in these uh, houses of legislature, parliament, corporation. Routinely, people are throwing things at each other, pushing each other, throwing mics, kind of debates, kind of names people are calling each other, you know, on, on calling on religion, on, on, on whatever issues. I think it is necessary that the rule of law decency and uh, 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 there should be proper uh, circumspection between people that you should know what you speak you are you call yourself a democracy democracy is not the law of the jungle freedom of speech does not mean absolute freedom to say whatever you like don't bother about anything else we have certain rules in a society law is nothing but a system of rules by which you are supposed to you know carry on that is rule of law so to bring up the debate to what it was and what it should be, 
I think this judgment is a salutary judgment. Okay. People should look at it and say, well, an introspect. They look, if I do this, then it can happen to me also. Right. And I may lose my career. I think it's very, very important to set the ball rolling. So the Congress party has referred to uh, 202, I think it's section 202, where uh, a judge needs to call for a report, um, you know, if it's not taking place within his or her jurisdiction. The issue of jurisdiction was raised, uh, this particular verdict was in uh, Surat, the incident took place, what he said was in Kolar and Karnataka, and the Congress appears to believe for now that an inquiry was not conducted. Do you believe that there, this is legal lacunae? Uh, Vishnu. This is clutching at straws. You're talking about some kind of technicalities. Now, in today's world, today I and you are speaking on TV. Can somebody uh, tomorrow, can I go tomorrow to a court and deny this? Yeah. That I never spoke to Vishnu on TV and you should formally prove it in a, in a, but a formal way as it was required to be proved, a document required to be proved 100 years ago by calling the maker of the document, asking for signatures. Did you sign? Did you write the document? All that is all gone. Today, I mean, if it is clear that I am speaking to you on TV, tomorrow the court will take it. And the Evidence Act has been amended. The court will take it. The moment something is shown, unless something is disproved, that there is a, it's a fake, fake uh, document. I mean, this is absolutely clutching at straws. The point is, there is no doubt, this is what he said, there is no doubt that the accused is not denying what he said. So the words mean what they mean. What's the, there's no point of, I mean, uh, on cogitating or agitating. It's a simple line. It's one simple phrase. Either it is defamatory or it is not defamatory. I don't know what's the point of going round and round. But sir, you know, the counter argument in all of this is that uh, the hateful comments made by leaders, for example, Pragya Thakur, they've got unpunished. Yes, there may not have been cases in all of these cases, in all of these instances that have been diligently pursued, this, that and the other. But, um, you know, I mean, that's the larger issue that... Hey, Vishnu, uh, unfortunately, there is no negative equality in this country. There is no negative... Uh, 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 Article 14, as we say in courts, if somebody's got away, it doesn't mean that a second person should also get it. And as I said, this should serve as a beacon to all concerned that look, if we do this, somebody will do this, and you know, this could well be the result. And look at the man who filed that case in Surat. He's also a Modi, I read, who, who's an MLA. And he talked. Not about the, the allegation against the Prime Minister, I said, but about the entire Modi clan or, or entire, uh, you know, uh, the body of Modi's, whether related or not. But according to me, this allegation was, or this bab or remark was made directly against the Prime Minister to start. In but the, tell me this, sir, again, in terms of the process. Now, if you look at the, uh, and again, this is something which has come up today by the Congress in their press conference. April 2019, there was a particular justice, a magistrate who was the judge. In June 2021, Rahul Gandhi recorded a statement. In March 2022, a year later, that's three years after the case, the complainant filed another case against Rahul Gandhi, which was then registered. But then this complainant went on to the High Court asking for a stay on his own complaint. And then 11 months after this, seems to wake up, to use the words of the Congress, Right, seeking a vacation of the stay that he had obtained. Uh, therefore, is this not curious? The the, the process. No, look. Uh, I mean, I, I am not equipped to answer uh, these uh, questions of procedure or details about that particular case. I mean, whether it took. I mean, the fact that it took four years, according to me, itself is too long. If it was a civil defamation, never have ended in the next ten years or twenty years. I mean, that that that. I mean, if all that happened, why didn't the Congress party take it up in the higher court at that moment? Right. I mean, if the man went and got a stay of his own case, what stopped the party or the accused of going to a higher court and saying that, well, there is something wrong. Why is this man wanting a stay? I mean, the fact that a judge changes. Do you know that in our country, in the trial courts, there is a routine system of judges being transferred from one type of another to another type of cases by and large every six months. It happens in the High Court also. 
Sometimes it happens in the Supreme Court also. Because judges also get bored of doing that type of cases. So, I mean, these are routine issues. And if there was something more that meets the eye, it was open to the party to go up to, go up to a higher court and say, come on, there is some manipulation going on. What's the point of now uh, raking these issues when you are faced with the verdict? Look at the substance. Not all this. All this is irrelevant. If it was relevant, it should have been taken up at the relevant time. Today, it is crying over spilt milk. One final question. Isn't it actually two questions? The first one is this. Um, given the fact that I know what the law says, I know that uh, the Parliament Secretariat has followed the law and you can't really question that. However, the Congress is appealing, right? And there is a possibility, a strong one, at least they seem to believe so, that they'll get a stay and that, uh, you know, I mean, this or, or, or the order will be thrown out. Now, in a situation like this, um, should there not be a system where, at least for a finite period of time, since the appeal is going to be immediate, it's not three months or, or anything which used to be the old thing, that there is some wisdom that, no, let's see what takes place before we actually throw the rule book at a particular leader. Because he stands not just to lose his, uh, you know, I mean, uh, parliament. I mean, he's already out of parliament. He's been disqualified. He stands to lose his house as well and whatever other privileges he does. So, see, what are your views on that? Yeah, Vishnu, there was a provision which was added to the law that the disqualification should not take effect for a sitting member for at least three months or till the time an appeal is filed. In the and stays. then Rahul Gandhi threw apart that thing and it That's went. right. That's right. So, so, let's forget that he removed it or anybody. The fact of the matter is it is not there. Since it is not there, the original law survives in that states that the moment a conviction is recorded by the judge, ipso facto, the next second, not minute, the next second, the disqualification, disqualification takes effect. So if the judgment is pronounced at 10 o'clock, at 10.01.01, the disqualification takes place. There was no need or a legal requirement for the Lok Sabha Secretariat to have issued an order, which it did. That may be for public consumption. It has no meaning, it has no relevance, it, it has no sanctity. It has disqualification took place yesterday. Yes, the accused has the right to file an appeal. Every day we do such appeals. Right. People file an appeal the next day or within two days. You have lawyers, you have backing, you have parties. Why couldn't you file an appeal yesterday itself in the afternoon and tell the judge the appellate judge should take it up at 2 o'clock. Every day it is done. In routine cases, it is done. No, so they what apparently the seem to require more time. Do you find that an argument that's odd? Uh, by Vishnu, it is laughable. For small cases, even when I was a youngster at the bar, a person like that would come. I would drop an appeal by hand in two, in two hours or one hour, attach the judgment. And even if you don't have the judgment, attach... Uh, a one-line order that I have been convicted with leave to file the judgment after two hours and take it up at four o'clock. Every day in the Supreme Court and the High Court, we mention matters at 10 o'clock, uh, requesting the Chief Justice to list it at two o'clock because some demolition will happen, some conviction will happen, sure. some disqualification will happen. And this is absurd. One final question, the larger issue in this country, there has been so much which has been written and said about defamation and uh, the laws of criminal defamation. Do you believe that the law on criminal defamation must remain? Or do you believe it is a challenge to freedom of speech which we enjoy? Well, and which I, we... well uh, as at present advised, in the situation of our democracy, though the largest but not the maturest, keeping in view that it is there in at least 120 countries in the world, I was looking at Google on that, including a large number of uh, developed nations, including the U.S., I think uh, it is required in the context of our democracy and the manner in which, uh, uh, you know, the houses are being conducted and, uh, uh, you know, physically people are th throwing things at sure. each other, including mics, which is the lowest of the low uh, which we have reached. Uh, and the fact that uh, civil defamation takes years, years and years, which has no real uh, relevance or any worth left. It is not appropriate that it should be removed today. Otherwise, it will become a law of the jungle. It right. takes more than half a lifetime to build a reputation and doesn't take more than five or ten seconds to destroy it with the social media and the internet at command. You say something, Vishnu, 
what I and you are talking today is being probably being heard and recorded for posterity and being heard by millions of people across the world. Yeah. I mean, it's obvious that it cannot uh, be done away with today. Thank you, sir. I think my big takeaway from this conversation is when you said that, you know, let this be looked at as a beacon, this particular verdict, one which applies not just to Rahul Gandhi, but perhaps set some sort of a standard across the country. God knows we need to have a higher standard of political discourse in this country. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Bye-bye.